And one of the things that stuck out to me is when we heard about that Voyager bankruptcy is that crypto didn't drop, right? It was kind of like, meh. Hello everyone today, our guest is Gareth Soloway. In this video, Gareth Soloway talks about what his analysis about the potential Bitcoin bottom, Bitcoin short-term price prediction, and lot more on the current economic situation. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. It was a great week for investors as nearly all of the top 100 cryptocurrencies by market capitalization grew in value, despite the lingering crypto winter exacerbated by insolvency issues at crypto lenders Vault and Voyager. Bitcoin has jumped more than 12% over the last seven days to trade at $21,565 as of this writing, according to CoinMarketCap. Meanwhile, Ethereum enjoyed an even bigger rally, adding more than 15% to $1,216. As prices recovered, industry news was rife with stories about Vault and Voyager's financial difficulties, a week after Singapore-based crypto hedge fund 3AC filed for Chapter 15 bankruptcy after failing to meet margin calls from lenders and barely a fortnight after lender Celsius froze withdrawals due to financial woes. To be honest, like, like it's definitely some, some part of it is institutional, but at the same time, it's just like the psychology of the markets. It's just the way people work. So you could look at almost any asset and when everyone is bullish, right? So if you have, if you have a market that's just made up of 10 people, right? And if all 10 people bought that asset, there's no one left to buy, right? So, so when we were at 65, 68, 69,000, that's kind of what had happened. It was like max bullishness. Everyone that was interested in buying had gotten in and then all it takes is a few sellers. And then all of a sudden everyone starts to get nervous and there's no mm. buyers and it starts coming down. So vice versa on the downside here, you just get so many, I mean, there were so many people, I had people coming up to me saying, you know, when we were below 20, I was really starting to doubt whether or not I should just dump my position. And that's usually that pivot point when you start to see that reversal. Wow. Yeah. So my question is, is it, is it sentiment? Is it because people become numb to the negative news that we've been experiencing? Or is there something in the macro economics that's happening that's making Bitcoin kind of go back up now? Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. I, I think it's partially human psychology. It's just the human nature um, of the charts and or, or not of the charts, but just human nature in general. And then I also think that that the charts play into human nature where you have this 2017 high. So, so, you know, people are getting very bearish. They're getting to that point of max pain, but then you also have people saying like myself saying, you know what, we should get a bounce here. Maybe I'll start nibbling a little bit. Well, if you get enough people to nibble, you start to get that upswing. And then as it goes up, more and more people are going to be convinced that the low is in. So then they're going to pile on, they're going to FOMO in, right? And you start to have that reversal. So it's, it's, a, it's so weird, man, but that's essentially charts are just human beings buying and selling, which is greed and fear. And, yeah. and you almost have to trade the markets like you're trading humans, not yeah. literally humans, but yeah. So, so number one, I, I am, I am long some, some Bitcoin. I have some long Ethereum. Um, I have some long polka dot, uh, you know, just kind of, kind of as we were below those levels, a lot of those charts, I mean, everything kind of trades with Bitcoin. So you kind of, do a shotgun effect with a lot of different ones. I did I did take profits today on Matic, which is Polygon. And I'll just show you guys this, just because again, this is just cool TA analysis type stuff. But basically Polygon had this beautiful little cup and then handle pattern. And then notice this trend line. And again, you know, part of it is, it's not that I don't think Polygon can go higher, but when you have a bunch of different positions, as you get in the money on them, you take just some off the table, put those in your pocket because not only does it is it smart money management, but also it, it puts you in a position where if, if all of a sudden, let's say the crypto market does something I don't understand tomorrow or don't expect, at least I, I cushion myself with those profits. So I took some on Matic um, and, and, and one other one as well. But but just going to what you were saying is is um, basically, you know, I, I'm in a position where I think that Bitcoin after this pump up, that'll have it its final flush. And number one is we have to remember that the average cycle for Bitcoin on the downside during winters is at least 12 months. We're not even there. If you look at the November highs, some people look at from the April highs, but I'm going with more the highest point there for the cycle. Um, so I think you're, you have to have one more flush. I also think, again, this is so representative of like the dot com 2.0, right? So we had the same situation where the craze was just, and I know a lot of people that are watching haven't, didn't trade through that, 
but it, it is like, it's like deja vu for me. The only difference is I was like 19 years old back then versus what I am now. So, so it was like a five cent stock would go to like 20 cents one day, the next day, 50 cents, the next day, a dollar 50. I mean, it was just incredible. Just like what we saw in the crypto sphere here. Um, we also saw Amazon. That was the beginning of Amazon. It was $112 stock. It fell to six bucks. So, so you have to look at that. Collapse. Wouldn't you love to buy that? Wouldn't you love to buy that one up? Unbelievable. By the way, post split, it's like 50 cents. I mean, incredible. Yeah. So, so I mean, the key is I really do think that Bitcoin will have the result of what Amazon does. I really do think it's going to be that important to our infrastructure and and the monetary system going forward. So I think at some point this gets really, really interesting as a long term hodl position. But for me, I think it's got to go to that twelve thousand dollar level. Let me show my chart again here and I'll keep it as short as I can. So if we flip over to Bitcoin, I still have this and I'm just going to raise these lines real quick to keep it as clean for you guys as possible. But basically what you have is, is what I call a measured move uh, calculation, which is taking that sixty nine thousand high. We basically had a nonstop drop here. Then you had three months of almost perfect sideways parallel consolidation. And what you do is you take this distance and you map it out to this distance and you end up getting basically 12,000. Also 12,000 happens to be about an 80 to 85 percent drop from 69, uh, which is the standard yeah. correction or bear market, bear winter uh, Bitcoin has. And then also lastly, you know, you have this level right here where there's a major, major support in here. So again, that's kind of what my next target downside will be. No, I think it's good news. I think that uh, Bitcoin is long overdue for a little bit of good news and a little bit of a pop recently here. Uh, there was just so much negative sentiment over the last like month, I would say, especially, you know, you had Celsius, you had all these other things going on. And one of the things that stuck out to me is when we heard about that Voyager bankruptcy is that crypto didn't drop, right? It was kind of like, meh. Okay, you know, and that's whenever you see that, that's a pivot point, right? That's a, that's a key when something doesn't sell off on bad news. So, so I liked that. Um, you know, if you look at the chart, I mean, here I can show my charts here real quick. But one of the things that I'm a big fan of is that 2017 high, at least for a near term bounce. And if we jump over to the monthly, you can clearly see, I mean, yeah, we pierced the line here, but that thing's holding. I mean, that is absolutely holding. So I got upside upside targets for me in the near term is that 25,000 level. So if I put a line, actually, you know, let's, let's take a step back here. So number one, the high today, notice the high of this candle here and the high right here. So okay. that is your near term resistance, right? 20, 21,800. I do think it gets through there. I think this is just a minor resistance point. Um, and then my target again remains 25,5 with potential to maybe get to about 28 and change thousand. Mm. So this is minor, this is major, this is major. I would be somewhat doubtful that we'll be able to get through 28 and change. I think this is a ton of resistance. I still think there's unfortunately one more big move down that's gonna surprise a lot of people, but the market is finicky in that it has to make people start to believe in the bull case again before it can kind of rip it the other way. So we still have to get that little bit more of a move up get some people thinking the lows are in and then you'll see it kind of come back down again. No, I think it's each each trader and each investor's own personal, you know, risk tolerance. You know, some people will will, you know, kind of protect themselves way more than others, right? And again, you just have to be aware of what you're doing and and the risks that you're taking on. So like for me, I, I'm believe it or not, most of my money's actually in stocks or either long or short stocks and so forth. Um, mainly because stocks especially stocks like Apple and Microsoft, they're not as volatile as crypto, right? So, so I basically segment my, my swing trade money or investment money in different segments. Some goes to gold and silver. I've bought physical gold and silver because that's kind of like my insurance policy. If I wake up tomorrow and like the banks are closed and everything's, you know, and I can't get Bitcoin off, you know, all those type of things. I like to have a little physical on, on hand. But aside from that, like gold and silver, um, you could argue real estate, but I think real estate's in a bubble. So I think that's a little risky right now. Um, and then some stocks, I think you have to look at, at certain stocks and then you have your crypto. And so I, I don't really do a lot of like, there's option strategies you can employ for protecting me. But, but since most of my stuff is swing trading, I'm not a huge long-term investor. I don't protect myself much aside from having different asset classes. Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be ultimately good for Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin will have an inflection point where at some point, you know, it goes down with the stock market goes down and then there's going to be some inflection point at some price where where if the Fed. So if we get into a depression type scenario, 
then chances are we have maybe even deflation or or, or at least lower inflation. And if you hear that, Miguel, like if you, Miguel, so you hear if, that deflation, deflation, Miguel. Yeah, well, I, I still hear you talking about XRP too, and that hasn't worked. It's out not. It's, it won't last for long. Though. This is the, <laughs> so basically, all right. So so right now we have inflation up here and and unemployment down here. As we slide into the recession, people spend less. It's going to bring down inflation but unemployment's gonna rise. And the Fed is gonna say, okay, well now inflation is down here, maybe still at 4% or 5%, so not at their 2% mandate. But if you get unemployment at like 10%, you can't tell me the Fed's gonna be like, oh, sorry guys, uh, you know, inflation's still 4%. Explain, 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 Gareth, to the average person, how does inflation affect the the employment markets like how, how do those two directly correlate because every time we hear jerome powell speak and, and, and you know i know some of this but i'd love to hear you teach this just on a simplified term how does inflation and the employment data like directly correlate so basically the, the more people employed and and the tighter the labor market the more businesses have to pay their employees the more money you have, the more people will bid up asset prices. So let's just say you have 10 people and there's a TV, right? So people say, well, you know, 10 people want that TV. Let's raise the price, right? Plus you're getting scarcer resources. So you have more, more resource, you know, like oil going up and going up, more people are driving. So it's all coordinated, but the, then the higher inflation gets, the more it puts pressure on people because now it's outpacing what they're making and then it causes a recession. So it's like, it's this back and forth weird thing where it's just like a, a ping pong ball or, or a pinball machine. It's possible that a trader might be able to judge whether to buy, sell, or hold crypto assets simply by assessing the mood on social media. There is, of course, a famous tool that purports to summarize emotions for you, the fear and greed index. And technical analysis is also, at its core, a mathematical mapping out of past market sentiment behavior in the markets being, after all, action resulting from mass scale changes in people's feelings. Would it be viable, then, to assess what your next move should be simply by looking at, for example, crypto Twitter, rather than by checking price charts and their indicators? Certainly, with the benefit of hindsight, the previous Bitcoin top should not have been too difficult to catch, as long as you were aware of one complicating feature. When actually at the top, a euphorically bullish sentiment will result in a lot of people insisting that the best is yet to come. And so, last year, it played out that way as a narrative caught on that the price of Bitcoin reaching 100k was all but certain, that the higher prices rose, the firmer ultra-bullish theories became, and that the cycles never failed. Never mind that the cycles could hold perfectly well without BTC hitting 100k, and that near 69k was a very strong level to reach at this phase in Bitcoin's lifetime anyway. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.